Today, there are hundreds and millions of people worldwide who are unnecessarily blind or visually impaired from causes that are treatable or preventable. So my name is Eva DeVay and I'm one of the optometrists at Style Optique and Opticians in Market Drayton. And in today's presentation, I want to share with you all about the miracle that is your eyes and vision and what you can do to prevent sight loss in the future and to protect, preserve and prioritise your vision. So in 1941, a team of scientists at Columbia University in America identified the absolute threshold of vision, and that is the minimum number of photons, which is a particle which transmits light, that must strike our retinas in order to elicit an awareness of visual perception. So using this and taking into account other considerations, they actually concluded that you could make out the faint glimmer of a candle flame up to 30 miles away. And also, our eyes are responsible for four-fifths of the information that our brain receives, and they pass on 2D images to the brain, which it then interprets. So in fact, 80% of what we learn is through our eyes, and we actually see with our brain, not our eyes. And did you know that whereas most parts of our body need to warm up to their full potential, our eyes start to work the second we open them? No need for warm-up exercises and stretches. In fact, they're even at work while you sleep. So during that phase, just before you wake, the time when you have your most vivid dreams, they there's something known as REM, rapid eye movement, when they move really rapidly. And no one really knows why this happens. And the other fascinating fact about your eye is that your iris has 256 unique characteristics. And that the network of blood vessels in the retina is so complex that even identical twins don't share a similar pattern. And this is a reason why, you know, retinal scans are increasingly being used for security purposes. And also retinal scanning has medical applications, you know, diseases such as AIDS, malaria, chickenpox, and hereditary diseases like leukemia, sickle cell anemia, and also pregnancy can all affect the eyes. Another fascinating fact is that the human eye can detect more than 10 million colours. So humans, along with most other animals, use three colour receptors to see the spectrum of light. And we can see millions of variations of reds, yellows and green. And finally, most blindness is preventable. So through timely treatment and access to eye care, most visual impairment can be prevented treated or cured which is why it's so important to love your eyes to look after your eyes and to have regular eye examinations so let's talk now about how we see so our eyes are amazing really so we have the cornea at the front of our eyes which and this acts like a window really at the front of the eye and light reflected off images that we're looking at actually enters our eyes through the cornea and then we have the pupil and the pupil opens and closes to control the amount of light that comes in. And then we have our lens, which helps to focus the light onto the retina. And the lens is adjustable and it uses a little tiny muscle called the ciliary muscle to change the shape and help us focus on objects at different distances. Now, because the front of the eye is curved, it bends the light, which creates an upside down image on the retina. And the retina is roughly the area of a tenpence coin and is packed with photosensitive cells called rods and cones. Now, cones enable us to see images in colour and detail and are also the cells responsible for daylight vision and they don't function at night at all. And there are three kinds of cones responding to red, green, and blue light. Now, our rods are responsible for the night vision. And the rods are sensitive to light, but they're not sensitive to color. Now, the retina turns the light into signals and images that the brain can understand. And once the image is, is clearly focused on the sensitive part of the retina, energy in the light that makes up that image creates an electrical signal. Nerve impulses can then carry information about that image to the brain through the optic nerve. So that is the way our eyes work and create images. 
So let's go on to our site and talk a little bit about the eye examination. Well, first of all, let's give you a few visual facts. So sight is the nation's most precious sense by far. In fact, 10 times more people, that's 78% 78, 78 of people, said sight was the sense they fear losing the most. And fortunately, in many cases, vision loss can be prevented if it is diagnosed and treated early enough. So again, super important to have regular eye examinations. And on a less scary note, life is so much better when you can see clearly. So we would always recommend as optical professionals that most people have their eyes examined at least at a minimum of every two years. But you may need to have your eyes examined more regularly. For instance, if you notice any changes to your sight, if you're having any problems with your eyes like headaches, or if a medical professional or optometrist advises you to. And it's also, it's very important to emphasize that an eye examination is so much, much more than just a test of your vision. It can also identify any issues you may have with your eye health, like glaucoma, cataracts, macular degeneration. And also it can detect general health issues like high blood pressure and, and diabetes, often well before you even start to begin to notice symptoms yourself. Now, a comprehensive eye examination um, at Style Optique usually takes around about 45 minutes to an hour. And during this eye examination, we're going to ask you about your general health, any problems you may be having with your eyes or vision. We'll be, discuss any close relatives who have a history of eye problems. And we want to find out about your work and your hobbies and, and how you use your eyes on a daily basis. We'll also be assessing your distance vision, that's for TV and for driving, and your near vision, which is for reading and close work. We're also going to be checking things like your eye movements and coordination just to ensure that both your eyes are working together and that no undue stress is being placed on your eye muscles. And we're also going to check the health of your eyes by examining the outside with specialist equipment like our slit lamp and also the inside of your eyes in detail with our ophthalmoscope and also, we have a deep retinal scan to really help us do this and look deeply into your eyes and be able to pick up conditions earlier than ever before. And we also carry out interocular pressure tests and tests for things like chronic glaucoma. More on this later. So we can identify a number of issues during an eye examinations relating to both your eyes and, of course, your general health. So I'm going to go through now some of the more common ones. So short-sightedness, you've all heard of short-sightedness or myopia. Um, this is usually due to the eye being slightly too long. And this means that light focuses in front of the retina at the back of your eye rather than focusing directly on it. And around a third of people in the UK are short-sighted, although this is rapidly increasing at the moment because we are going through a myopia kind of ec epidemic. And this condition usually starts during primary school years with symptoms such as children struggling to see the board at school or struggling to see the distance. And it does tend to gradually, well, it does tend to worsen, not always gradually, it can go quite speedily at times, it tends to worsen until the eye has stopped growing. But in actual fact, it can come on at any age, but it's much more common in, in, in childhood. And you're actually far more likely to become short-sighted if your parents are short-sighted. And research carried out in Australia suggests that children who regularly spend time playing outdoors can actually reduce their risk of becoming short-sighted where those children that spend a lot of time indoors especially on you know on their phones and on devices can actually increase their chance of becoming short-sighted now on the subject of short-sightedness at style optique we are qualified in myopia management so we can actually supply lenses and give medical advice on ways to reduce the progression of short-sightedness and this is very very useful in children and can help prevent the eye diseases that comes alongside short-sightedness as they get older
Now we also have hyperopia or long sightedness. Now normally light is focused by the cornea and lens to form a sharp image on the retina. And long sightedness occurs when the eyeball is slightly too short so that the focus point is behind the retina at the back of the eye. And if you're short, long sighted, sorry, you will often find it more difficult to see clearly objects that are close to you. Then we have presbyopia. Now, presby presbyopia is a very natural part of aging. So unfortunately, it comes to us all. And it's actually caused by a loss of elasticity a loss of elasticity of the lens of the eye. And presbyopia usually starts around the age of 40. And you can often start to find it difficult to read small prints on packets, or you have to start ramping up the font size on your phone screen. And, you know, your arms aren't long enough, you have to start holding things at at, at arm's length. And you can also notice that it can take longer to change your focus between looking at something close to you and looking at something far away or even vice versa. So if you're sort of watching the telly and then someone texts you and you're looking down at your phone, it can just take a little bit longer to refocus from one distance to the other. And this is around about the time, around about the age where most people start to require glasses for reading or, or even multifocals for the first time. Then we have um, astigmatism. Now, if you have astigmatism, this means your eye is shaped more like a rugby ball than a, than a football. And I myself have astigmatism. So light is focused at more than one place in the eye, which can cause blurred vision really in, at, at all distances. And it can be difficult to tell a H from an N as well. Um, and you can also suffer with things like headaches and eye strain, particularly, you know, if you've been concentrating for a long time on, on reading a book or on a computer screen. Now, anyone can have astigmatism, but it does normally occur alongside short-sightedness or long-sightedness. And in very young children, a particularly high astigmatism can cause lazy eye. Now, flashes and floaters. Now, these become much more common as we age. They can feel a little bit scary when you first start to get them. Um, but they are more common as we age. And they are more common in people who are short-sighted and also in people who've had any form of eye surgery. Now, as we get older, the clear jelly or the vitreous that helps maintain the shape of our eyes starts to become more liquid and it begins to collapse away from the retina. And you might see this as a sudden flash of light or even small sparkles like fireworks in one or both eyes. Now, floaters are small kind of small, dark, or almost transparent like dots or strands, or even something that looks like a hair or small pieces of a cobweb that float in the gel or the vitreous gel inside your eye. Now, floaters are formed when the jelly inside your eye separates into watery fluid and wavy collagen fibers and appear to float in front of your eyes. And they are, in fact, they can feel strange, but they are very common and they are normally harmless. Now, having said that, very occasionally, flashes and floaters can be a sign of a more serious condition, something called a retinal detachment, which is sight threatening and really should be treated as soon as possible. So even though most cases of flashing lights and floaters are quite normal, if you do have a sudden onset of them, especially if accompanied by a recent bang to the head or a shadow in your vision or any vi visual or the visual disturbances, it is important to get these symptoms checked out as soon as possible. So next we have glaucoma. Now glaucoma is in actual fact a group of eye diseases where the optic nerve is damaged by the pressure of the fluid inside your eye. And it can lead to sight loss if not treated early enough. And the two most common types of glaucoma are chronic and acute. 
Now, chronic glaucoma often develops very, very slowly, and there are very often no symptoms in the early stages. But in the later stage, you may begin to notice blurring around the outside of your vision. The the problem with this, the problem with chronic glaucoma is by the time that you start developing symptoms, you've lost that sight and it won't come back again. So it's really important to to get glaucoma picked up before the sight loss begins to happen. And you're often more at risk of developing chronic glaucoma if you're aged over 40, if you're particularly short-sighted, if you are of African or Caribbean origin, if you have a close relative with glaucoma, a parent or a sibling, if you have raised pressure in your eye or ocular hypertension, if you're diabetic, or if you have raised blood pressure. Now, unfortunately, there's no cure for chronic glaucoma, but it can be treated effectively, normally with eye drops, which you have to use every single day. And what these drops do is they reduce the pressure in your eye to prevent any further damage to the optic nerve. And when you're taking the drops, you're not really going to feel like anything is happening, but you do need to ensure that you keep on using them because your sight will be so much worse if you just suddenly stop the treatment. And it's also important that you regularly attend your sight tests if you have glaucoma and regularly attend any follow-up hospital appointments that you may have. So then we have acute glaucoma. Now, acute glaucoma is when the, is what the causes really the pressure inside your eye to increase rapidly and it can cause short bursts of severe pain and discomfort and blurred vision. It can even cause symptoms like nausea, vomiting, red eyes, um, seeing colored rings around white lights. And and, and people have described it as being a little bit like looking through a haze or, or a mist. And if you get any of these symptoms and they persist, you should go to A&E immediately so that they can reduce that pressure, get that pressure down inside your eye and get rid of the pain as quickly as possible. Now, if you have this, even if the symptoms appear to go away, your vision may be permanently damaged. Um, and once your pressure, once, you know, they can get your pressure down, once that pressure is lowered, the ophthalmologist will, can use a specialist laser or a specialist surgery to bypass the blockage in your eye's drainage system to prevent this problem coming back again. Now, people at risk of developing acute glaucoma, again, include people over 40. Um, also women and people of East Asian or South Asian origin, people with a family history, of closed angle glaucoma, people who are long sighted. And if one of your parents or children or brother or sister has glaucoma and you're over 40, it's so, so important that you do not skimp on your eye tests. Have your eye test regularly because it really can save your sight for the future. And we also have macular degeneration. Now, macular degeneration is the leading cause of sight loss in the UK and worldwide, affecting millions, millions of people, especially those over the age of 65. And there are two stages of macular degeneration. Now, the early stage macular degeneration is always what's called dry AMD. And this is when tiny yellow deposits known as drusen begin to build up behind the macula. And the macula is the area at the back of your eye that's responsible for your central vision, most of your color vision and making out fine detail. Now, most people with early um, macular degeneration have near normal vision and most or many don't actually progress to the later stages. So, and, and, and won't actually develop sight loss. So even if you've been diagnosed with early stage macular degeneration, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to impact your vision. Now, around 10% to 15% of people with early stage macular degeneration can go on to develop late stage macular degeneration, which can be wet or dry. Now, this develops when abnormal blood cells grow underneath the macula and they begin to leak blood or fluid. And this can actually lead to scarring and rapid loss of central vision. 
Now, wet macular degeneration, unfortunately, can develop very, very suddenly. But if it's picked up early enough, if the second your vision suddenly changes, you, you get, you know, seen, it can be treated. Now, unfortunately, late dry macular degeneration where your macula th- is where your macula thins, but there are no leaking blood vessels, this is fairly rare. And unfortunately, at this current stage, there is no current treatment for it. Now, some of the symptoms of macular degeneration are things like straight lines appearing distorted or bent, spots or smudges in your vision, bright lights becoming uncomfortable, eyes having difficulty adapting when moving between light and dark rooms, <clears throat> colors can look faded and lose their, you know, lose the strength and vividness. And objects can even appear to change shape and size or or be moving and words can disappear when you're reading. So as you get a little bit older, you should regularly check your vision really by, you can look with each eye separately at straight lines on door frames or Venetian blinds, or even using a specialist Amsler chart, which can be provided by us um, um, or you know, hospitals and things like that. If you And if you notice the lines start to become distorted, although there are any patches missing when you're looking at lines, you should see, come to us or go to your normal optometrist immediately. So some of the very, very common eye conditions here are blepharitis, which is really quite common, not particularly serious in, in the fact that it's not going to cause you to go blind but it can make your eyelids red and puffy and your eyelashes crusty and it can make them feel really itchy and sore and in and in severe cases your lashes may fall out and you can even develop small ulcers or styes as well so it's not particularly pleasant to have um blepharitis can't be totally cured unfortunately but it is possible to manage and make your eyes more comfortable with warm compresses warm compresses sorry lid cleansing um, lubricants for the eye and antibiotics, all of which can be supplied by by us at Style Optique or, or by whoever your um, optometrist is. We also have cataracts. This is a fairly common condition. And cataracts really happen to everybody and they're formed when the clear lens inside your eye starts to become cloudy or misty. And it's very often very slow and very gradual and very painless. And it does usually happen as we get older. Although occasionally cataracts can develop, some people can be born with them and um, they can develop following an injury or trauma to the eye. And even with some medical conditions such as diabetes or taking certain types of medications such as steroids. In addition, smokers um, are much more likely to get cataracts sooner rather than later and very often with cataracts your sight's not usually that affected in the early stages Um, but as it progresses um, the sight can become impaired and at that stage you may need to be referred to for cataract surgery to replace the cataract with a clear artificial lens and this is now a really simple effective operation but as i said not everyone gets to the point where they need a cataract operation despite having those changes in their lens and then finally we have dry eyes another really really common condition and this occurs really for one of two reasons or both reasons really depending on who you are it either occurs when your eyes don't make enough tears or your eyes can make enough tears, but your tears evaporate too quickly. Or it can be a combination of both of these factors. And it's often more common in women down to um, hormonal changes and in people really over the age of 65. And when you've got dry eyes, your eyes can feel quite scratchy or irritated. And in severe cases, it really isn't pleasant and your vision may become quite blurred and uncomfortable. And also the tiny little meibonium glands in your eyelids, which produce the oily part of your tears, can become less effective and, and may become blocked, which is which is blepharitis. And but dry eye can be treated. It can be treated with eye lubricants, 
um, which can help replenish that oily layer of your tears and stop them evaporating as quickly. And also things like using humidifiers and getting a good diet and things like that. All of these factors can help um, make dry eye much more comfortable and much more manageable. And again, that's something you can talk to us about at Style Optique. So a regular eye examination really is an essential part of your eye care. Um, and it's important to look after your eyes and your families every single day. And here are some ways that you can do this. So first of all, um, did you know babies are born with blurred vision and they see in black and white and their eyes continue to develop as they grow. And by the age of two, they can recognize familiar places and faces and they can see clearly near and far away and they can judge distances and depths and they can create their own images. Now, common childhood conditions include short-sightedness, particularly if parents are short-sighted. Long-sightedness can also be quite common and lazy eye is something you need to look out for really in children as well. Now, Lots of babies do look a bit cross-eyed and this is nothing to worry about and it can be quite normal and they often grow out of it as they become more able to focus. Um, but if there is a history of lazy eye or a baby in your family or your child doesn't seem to be growing out of this, then it's a good idea to talk to, talk to us or talk to your optometrist. Now, according to Eye Health UK, it's actually DIY activity in the home and in the garden that's actually the cause of more than 20,000 eye injuries each year. And some of these injuries have really led to quite serious permanent eye damage and loss of sight. So do make sure that you protect your eyes whenever and wherever you know, you're know you doing DIY. Um, so it's important to wear protective eyewear, for, ex for example, in activities where there's a risk of objects or liquids entering your eye, like hammering or drilling or welding or, you know, painting ceilings or layering insulation. Now, ordinary glasses and sunglasses just don't offer good enough protection. So it's important if you're doing these kind of jobs around the home that you do invest in a pair of good quality goggles or safety glasses that conform to European standards. And this is something we can offer and prescribe at Style Optique. Another key thing is when you're doing DIY is try not to touch your face until you have washed your hands because, you know, otherwise you can transfer the dust or, or nasty chemicals into your eyes. And try not to work alone either because, you know, especially if you're dealing with chemicals and things like that, it's worth having someone else available in case you suddenly need help. It's great to keep a first aid kit and phone handy. But in the case of an accident, if you do have an eye accident like this, it's really important not to rub your eyes. Don't and, and never wash or cut a punctured eye. Go to A&E as soon as possible. Now, if you've got an abrasion in your eye, it's going to need hospital treatment with drops, ointments, and a sterile pad often over the eye for at least 24 hours. If your eye's lacerated, this can be far more painful and may require medication and eye ointment and stitching of any torn tissue. Now, really, it, it depends on the severity of the accident. Um you know, if it's if you feel like something just tiny has gone into your eye and it's not too painful, that is something we can deal with in optical practice. We can remove foreign objects and um, just treat that for you in practice. But if it is something more severe, get yourself straight to A and E. So driving and vision. So. Drivers must be able to read a normal size number plate in daylight with glasses or contact lenses if worn at a distance of 20 meters and this corresponds to a certain line on on our letter chart um which it, which we call 612 now if you are driving when your vision is not good enough you're actually breaking the law and it actually invalidates your insurance so the College of Optometrists actually recommends that drivers have regular eye examinations and also test yourself as well. 
can you see that car number plate when it's 20 meters in front of you and if you require glasses for driving make sure you wear them you know even for short trips and if you wear contact lenses keep a spare pair of glasses in the car just in case and it's important that you tell the dvla or the dva northern ireland if you no longer meet the vision requirements for driving now if you have a home abroad or if you regularly are abroad it's important it's most country laws on the continent do require that you have two pairs of glasses for driving so do think about that if you spend a lot of time abroad it's important to have two pairs of glasses legally for driving and it's actually a good idea anyway in case something happens to your main pair so let's talk about lifestyle and and our eyes you are what you eat um so maintaining a healthy weight is not only good for your general health but it's also really really good for your eyes too now people who are overweight are unfortunately they are more likely to develop um diabetes which in turn can affect your eyes and maintaining a healthy weight can also help you help you keep your blood pressure under control and because you know high blood pressure can damage the blood vessels in the retina at the back of the eye high cholesterol that can increase your risk of having a stroke which can affect your vision and in some cases it can lead to a total sight loss in one eye now Although there is no strong evidence on the effect of diet on age-related macular degeneration, eating a wide variety of fruit and vegetables, including dark green leaves, is good for your general health and may support good eye health. And dietary supplements um, may be helpful for some people with macular degeneration too. And there are lots of dietary supplements out there which claim to be beneficial for eye health and they may be helpful for people who have existing macular degeneration and things like that and but you can also discuss with us um, whether or not they're going to be helpful for you and research also suggests now that smokers are up to four times more likely to develop eye health conditions particularly sort of macular degeneration and they're also more likely to develop cataracts and make diabetes related sight problems worse so one of the best things that you can do for your eyes if you're a smoker is to stop smoking and there's also alcohol consumption a lot of people don't realize that alcohol consumption can have a detrimental effect on your vision and your eye health both both in the short term actually and in the long term So when drinking alcohol, you can experience dry eyes, blurred vision and slower pupil reactions. But heavy long term alcohol consumption is actually associated with an increased risk of sight loss. And also drinking alcohol when pregnant can can permanently affect the health of your baby. and, And that does include sight loss, too. And. Many people actually worry that viewing a screen can cause damage to their eyes, but there's actually no evidence of this. In fact, because you can alter the size, the brightness and contrast of the display, it can be easier and more comfortable to view a screen in some cases compared to looking at things on paper. However, if you are looking at a screen for a long period of time, you may find wearing glasses for computer use helpful. And and again, you can come and talk to us about this because there is something called computer vision syndrome where you can start getting uncomfortable eyes when you look at the screen for long periods of time. So, So some good ways really to look after your eyes while you're on the screen is to apply the 20, 20, 20 rule. Every 20 minutes, look at something 20 feet away for 20 seconds. And this just gives your eye muscles a little bit of a rest. Also try to blink regularly. So focusing on a screen reduces our blink rate. And again, this can cause our eyes to be very dry, gritty and uncomfortable. So just telling yourself just to blink while you're on the screen can make your eyes a little bit more comfortable. Also, position your computer screen so that it's between 40 and 76 centimetres from your eyes. 
and make sure the top is level with or slightly below your eyes and is tilted away from you at a 10 to 20 degree angle. And just also ensure that there's no distracting reflections like from windows and things like that. And once you've adjusted your screen, adjust the font size so it's comfortable and easy to read. You can also use document holders for reading or for reference materials, and you can place them close to the screen at the same distance from your eyes. And this is going to enable your eyes to remain focused as they move between the screen and the documents. So the other th so UV light. So if you if you're someone that spends time outdoors in the sunshine, um, or if you enjoy sunbeds, or you know you, you know if you take part in winter sports and things like that, it's important to protect your eyes from harmful ultraviolet light. Now. Ultraviolet light is around us all year round, even in the winter, and exposure to ultraviolet light has been linked to certain eye conditions, including cataracts. And there is also a link between exposure to UV light and age-related macular degeneration. So when you're out and about, make sure that you and your children have good quality sunglasses with UV protection. Make sure all your sunglasses are made to British standard and carry the CE mark. All of our sunglasses, of course, at Style Optique are, um, carry a very high level of UV protection. You can also combine your sunglasses with a, with a hat, a brim or a sun visor just to give that extra layer of sun protection. And scientific studies have actually shown that children who spend time outdoors are less likely to be short-sighted and some eye problems are linked to unhealthy lifestyles so don't stop your children exercising outdoors and doing things outdoors just make sure their eyes are properly protected and, that, and that's the same with you as well um sunbeds now sunbeds do produce very high uv levels and this can cause serious damage to the outer and the internal structures of the eye such as benign eye growths called pterygium cataracts as well as skin cancers around that thin skin around the eyes so most of us health experts do advise against using tanning beds but if you do use them just make sure that you protect your eyes with tanning goggles or winkies, which are the small circular stickers that can be rolled into a cone and placed over the eye because just closing the eye, closing the eye just does not offer enough protection. So vision and falls. Now, of course, anyone can have a fall and children, of course, are always falling over. And there are lots of reasons why we fall over. But as we get older, particularly past the big 4-0, our eyes sight changes and it can play more of a role in us falling so wearing glasses for the first time having a big change in prescription perhaps going into bifocals or very focals for the first time can be a bit disorientating at first so give yourself a chance to get used to them and when you're moving around, just make sure you have a nice bright light so you can avoid trip hazards like rugs and or dark stairwells. And if you have a condition such as cataracts or macular degeneration, try and boost the contracts betw between objects in your home. For example, a dark seat on a white toilet against a dark floor because this can help you see better and prevent those falls. And also, particularly as we get older, it can take a while to adapt to bright sunlight when leaving the building. So have your sunglasses handy and or pop on a wide brimmed hat to diminish the dazzle. Ethnicity and eye health. Um, you know, ethnicity plays a part in your likelihood of developing certain eye conditions. So it's important to be aware of this. The College of Optometrists website, Look After Your Eyes, is a great, um, offers some great information actually on symptoms and treatment of a range of eye conditions. Uh, a study carried out in the US actually suggests that white people were more Caucasians were more than twice as likely to develop AMD than black people. And participants with Chinese ancestry were more likely to have wet macular degeneration. 
and people with African Afro-Caribbean ancestry are more likely to develop glaucoma earlier than others. And so, you know, as optometrists, we ensure that the relevant tests are included during your eye examination. So I do hope you've enjoyed today's presentation on eye health and looking after it and loving your eyes. And if you have any questions, please post in the comments below. And if you'd like to arrange an eye examination with us, please call or email the number on the screen and we'll look forward to helping you.